Okay, everybody, I am really excited today because I have Nina Kiri, who plays Alma on The Handmaid's Tale, which I just reviewed. I loved it so much, and she was one of my favorite characters, so this is really exciting for me. Nina, how are you doing today? I'm good. How are you, Steve? Excellent. So, Nina, a lot of people don't know you were born in Serbia, and then now you live in Canada. I was curious, what age did you move to Canada? Well, in Serbia in the 90s when I was born, there was a civil war. So my family left the country and moved to Canada, moved to Vancouver. <clears throat> and um, yeah, that's why we left. Wow. So how, wow. how young were you when, that, when you actually like came into Canada? I was super little. I was just one. I was just oh, a baby. Oh, wow. Okay. So I don't remember. But we spent a lot of time and like we went to, to Serbia a lot like in the summer to visit my grandparents. And like, yeah, so it kind of got a feel for the country. And you lived in Canada basically for the rest of your life after that? Yeah. Okay. And then I wanted to know too, growing up in Canada, when did you know you wanted to be an actress? Was there a specific moment? Did you have any specific idols that inspired you? Um, well, actually, my sister was in an acting class for like kids when I was like five or six. And I would go with her and then I was like, oh, I want to go. And then I started doing it and I really loved it. But like, you know, you know, when you're a kid, you don't really care for anything. Yeah, except yeah. For like doing sports. Yeah, so I've like, I, I been doing it since I was really young, but it wasn't until I started doing a lot of improv um, in high school that I was like, oh my God, like, I remember doing this when I was a kid. This is the best. And uh, I went to actually a film, there's a film school in BC where I'm from, and it's called Gulf Island Film and Television School. And it's for like kids, like 13 to 18 and you make your own short films there. And I went when I was 13 and I was like, this is so cool. Like we were just making our own projects. And a lot of my friends who were in the program, they were like 18. So they were going on to um, like college and a lot of them started going to film school. And then they were like, oh, Nina, do you want to be in my short film? And by that time I was in high school. And so I would just act in there like, weird short films and I was like I really like this oh, and wow. so I called yeah so I called this agency and I was like can I be in your agency and they were like okay and then they saw like the short films that I did so that's how I actually like started oh wow that's that's pretty wild I like that you called the agency too that that's pretty cool um so I was wondering too when you were doing these short films did you have a specific genre you were drawn to like was it comedy was it drama was it specifically acting or did you kind of like directing too or stuff like that um, no, at that time I was just acting because I wasn't, I don't think I had the capacity to like do anything more, but in school it was like comedy because of improv, which is like mostly based off of short comedic sketches, but I don't know, like short films are so weird. So, so many of them were like serious. Um, I remember a couple of them were funny, but most of them were like weird or dark or serious that I ended up doing. So I think it was like, comedy at school with like live theater but um short films and all the indie films I do that are like or short films are always like dark so I, I think it was both that there wasn't anything I like liked more yeah I noticed too when I was looking at your IMDb that you did a couple of horror movies I think like three of them recently and did you enjoy yeah. doing horror like was that like a challenge for you how did you feel in that kind of role I mean those films were more like I had um just like decided to start I had just graduated from university and I was like okay like I need to move to Toronto and I'm just gonna do the acting thing so those films were more like an opportunity for me to play a lead role like I wasn't necessarily like I want to do horror but I got cast as like the lead role and there were these like crazy cool multi-dimensional characters that I could play and I was like yes I want to do this um, but it wasn't necessarily that I'm a fan of horror. It was that they happened to be in the horror genre. Right. Um, but after doing them, I had such a way bigger respect for horror because, you know, they're so like fans of horror are the ultimate fans. Like they just love it. And they're so supportive. And people who make horror films also are such big fans of horror. And so like being around that, you can't help but kind of like, like feed off of the enthusiasm of that. Oh yeah. For so I sure. think I like got that 
enthusiasm for horror from it. Not that I'm trying to do like another million horror films, but like, yeah. for now I'm satiated. Sure. But like, it was still great to do, I think. That's awesome. I was wondering too, you're currently in Canada. So is there a lot of film work in Canada? Because I don't think like from the US, a lot of people even know that like The Handmaid's Tale, for example, was even filmed in Canada. Because I, I didn't know that. And it, it seems like a lot of work is going there right now. Yeah, there actually is. I mean, Toronto and Vancouver both have a lot of productions that shoot up here. And I think it's a money thing because um, I think it's like it costs less up here. Yeah, taxes and also the Canadian dollar. So there actually is a lot of work up in in Toronto and Vancouver. And there's also like a, a very wonderful indie film scene in Toronto, at least, that I like know of and I, there's a lot there's like a good film community here people are wanting to collaborate and like do things and I think that's so awesome yeah and there's a couple famous film festivals in Toronto that's really cool and now have you had thoughts about moving to the U.S. at all well yeah I do have um a artist visa so I can go down to um I can live down there for up to three years if I wanted to so oh, I do wow. sometimes go back and forth um if I have a certain meeting or something um And I might be, like, it depends when I finish filming. Um, But for now, like, I have my apartment in Toronto, and that's, like, where I feel is my home. Okay. But I'm definitely not opposed to the idea. It's just an issue of, like, timing when I I finish filming, and I might be going down for a couple months next year to L.A. Ooh. I'll see. Yeah. And actually, I I was in New York last week. Oh, that's awesome. Yeah, I had a couple of meetings there. It was great. Very cool. Okay, so going into... The Handmaid's Tale, which I actually just watched. I was late to the party, but it's a huge role for you to land, and it's a huge TV show to land on. What was the audition process like for that? Well, I actually, like, it wasn't a very long process because my character was supposed to be only in the first episode. Okay. And so the audition was like, oh, it's this random girl. And I'm like, oh, this show, I know this because the book is written by a Canadian author, Margaret Atwood. So I had read the book like in high school. It's actually like one of those books that you have to read in high school for certain schools. Oh, okay. And so I was like, this is so cool. Oh, my God. Like this literally, I just remember being like, this is the epitome of anything I would ever want to be in. And I didn't even know how big it would be or anything. It was just the way it was written and like the, the people that were working on, I'm like, this is so cool. But like any audition, I'm like, I don't care if I don't get it, whatever. And then it was just this audition. And then I had one or two callbacks for it. And I met Reed and one of the callbacks. And luckily I had just read an article about Reed and how cool she is um, on this online publication. And luckily I like didn't, realize that that was her like I didn't when I read like oh you're going to be meeting with the director I didn't read her name I was just like oh it's some like cool woman like right. sweet and I didn't read that it was her name and luckily I didn't because I think if I had I would have been like so much more nervous yeah but I realized <laughs> when I came home that that was her and I was like oh my god so then I got cast after a couple of auditions and then um Even when we were shooting the first episode, I was like, oh, this is so cool. Like, what a random nice thing that I get to do for, like, five days. And that's all it's going to be. And then um, I didn't realize. And then they they wrote me into more of the episodes. So, like, every single time I would would come on, I was like, this is so cool. I get to be here for another time. And then all of a sudden, it was, like, the end of the season. I'm like, I'm still here. Yeah. Wow. (laughs) That's great. So you, you said you read the book beforehand in required reading. Now, Alma is also in the book, and I was wondering, did Alma's character in the book affect your approach at playing her in the show in any way, or did you, like, keep just focus on Alma that's written in the script? I think Alma was more like, I had my wandering eye on the book, Okay, if that's an expression. Like, I, okay. I definitely, like, oh, I'll keep that in mind. Oh, he kept it in mind. Why do I keep using wandering eye for... No, I'll, I kept it in mind. That's the expression. Um, but I didn't, like... What I really liked about Alma in the script was that she's just so, like, random. Like, who is this person who's under this totalitarian regime who's literally, like, gossiping and acting like this normal girl? in the face of everything. And I just loved that. Like, I loved that. Like the first time you see Alma, she's like smiling. She's like, Hey, what's up? Oh my God. And they're like at the stoning. And I just found that to be so awesome, especially because I'm like looking around me and everyone else is 
under so much tension and there's so much tension in the show. And I just really, I didn't want to have the book affect me too much because I don't think that in the show Gilead, not that it's not affecting Alma too much, but it's not affecting her in the sense that she, she is under that same tension that so many other characters are under. So, so that was why I didn't really focus too much on her from the book. I I kind of was focusing on her as like a contrast to the show when we were filming it. I see. So the interesting thing about Alma is there's like a lot of mystery surrounding her, I feel, and that we know that she's kind of has connections to May Day, uh, the resistance group. And I'm, I'm wondering as an actress, when you know this and you're making choices as an actress, are you creating in your head information about her that we don't know so you know where to go with that Mayday thing? Like, are you creating like, oh, Alma must know this or Alma must know that or is like the director's telling you stuff that the audience doesn't know so you know what she actually knows or like how, I don't know if you know what I'm saying, but like how do you, <laughs> it's, I know what you mean. You know I what I mean? Well, yeah. Um, I'm trying to think what I did when we were doing that thing. I mean, kind of like, yeah, in a sense, like you can kind of, it's pretty, anybody could use their imagination to create anything they want. And I think I sort of did at, during those episodes. Um, but it's so funny because like at the end of the day, you're really just, because you're just like playing off of people and like playing with people and, you know, like Bruce will be there and I'll be like, Oh my God, like this. And he's like, I know I was thinking this for Alma and I, and you know, you're talking to people about it. And it's such a team effort that it doesn't even necessarily have to be you think of something in your head. Like maybe, you know, that day on set, you're talking about it with someone and that can really help you out in terms of like, how am I going to play this? Or like, what's going to be in my head when I play this? But um, for the most part, I didn't do much analysis into it. I I was more kind of like feeding off of the immediate state of, um, you know, where am I, who am I talking to? And like, you know, what are we talking about? And, and like, I, I don't like to go too much into things sometimes because um, it's you know, nice you, to be able to play off of my immediate surroundings when I'm on set and just kind of like work off of that. I don't know. Maybe that's like the improviser in me forever. Oh, okay. Like, so you don't I stay in character my... when you're home, just depressed. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Actually I come home and I'm like to my sister, I'm like, I can't tell you. Like, what are you talking about? <laughs> no, but like, I just, I, I do like to keep things lighter in that sense because I, sure. I find that I can get to cooler places when I'm more open to like, oh, like you know that. um feeding off people anyway so it's it is such like a dark show obviously and uh intense and dreary now on set when you're in a show like that do, does do you feel that feeling constantly cuz like a lot of these scenes are like that and does like when you go home and you're off of work do you have to like snap out of that kind of reality you're in yes i i see what you're saying and actually that's a, that's funny because in the first season, I really didn't feel that. Like I never felt those like that darkness okay. until I watched the first episode, and I was like, "Holy shit, this is yeah. so dark!" And I just remember being like, "Oh my god, is anybody else seeing this? Like, <laughs> what did we just make?" Because we had this like little screening before it was like colored or you know, and I was like, "This is very dark." And and then it it isn't until actually like the second season that I'm aware of how it's coming off and how dark it is. And we've had a couple of scenes where I'm just like, I, I ha- it's been really hard. Like wow, a couple of people are like, that was, that, that was really intense. And like, Damn. you know, even our amazing like background that we have, like there's just been times when, you know, someone kind of like freaks out and it's like, Oh God, this is hard. And yeah. I'm just like, no, I know. So, so there actually have been a couple of days where like, even I go home and I'm like, I just need to watch, like, binge watch stupid TV and then, like, hang out with my boyfriend. <laughs> like, you, you know, go. I just need to, like, do something happy and forget about Gilead. Yeah, exactly. So I was going to ask you, too, what was it like working with big stars like Elizabeth Moss and Ann Dowd? Did you have a moment on set where you're like, like, holy shit, like, pinch me. I'm I'm really doing this. I'm, I'm working with these big time actors now. Like, did you feel like a, that kind of, like, moment at all? Oh, yeah. Actually, in the first episode that I shot where I was like, oh, I'm going to do this show for a day, like where I didn't <laughs> realize that I would be in it more. I was like, this is just so cool. Yeah. And like I was um, I think it was I, it wasn't Liz, uh, Elizabeth Moss. It wasn't Lizzie. It was um, Alexis. 
because you know I had I hadn't really watched Madden and I knew like oh, okay. what Lizzie had been in and stuff, but it was more Alexis because Alexis is literally on Gilmore Girls and like who doesn't uh, know that yeah, show? Yeah, and she's yeah. like, hey, I'm Alexis, and I was like, hey, I know, like I'm you know, and then they were, but they were just so awesome. It it was like the first second was like, oh my god, and then it was like you know how it is with people like if everyone's just a person and you're kind of just like this is really cool but at the same time there's something about Handmaid's Tale where I just feel like we're all on the same team it's never felt like oh my god this person's a big star and like who am I it's always been like this person's a really good actor and because of that I feel like I'm doing so much so much more work and like so much better as an actor because of it and it more feels like we're all in it together as opposed to like, I'm working with these big stars. Well, I even didn't expect that. Like, I was like, this is so weird. I feel so a part of this and I'm not even like feeling intimidated or weird. Um, Like even I surprised myself with that. Good for you. Also, I was going to say one of my favorite scenes in the show is when the handmaids are being presented to the Mexican officials in that ballroom. And the scene to me was shot so beautiful. And you deliver the most shocking line I thought of the season and haunting when you said uh, Gilead only has one thing to trade that anyone wants. They want to trade us. They trade for handmaids. I screamed when I watched this scene because I didn't make that connection. I, I really thought they were just trading for, like, crops and shit. But uh, when, you, when you deliver that and you knew you had that pivotal line, did you feel pressure delivering that? Did you do that line in one take? Like, because there's so many people on set that day, I imagine. Yeah. I don't know. I, I don't think I... You just the did. one thing yeah. I remember from that day, yeah, I think I just did it. Like, you're natural. I, I think it was just like, no, no, I'm not even trying to do it. I just did it. I think I just did it. But actually, this is funny because the one thing I remember from that day was that because you could see, you could like, so we were standing in front of a mirror, so you could kind of see in the shot the people that were behind that were in front of our faces. So okay. for the entire time we were shooting that, everybody like. Joseph Fines, like all these people had to pretend to be playing with kids. Oh. And it was so funny. I was like, oh my God, I'm watching these like grown. It's just, it's so funny, like actors and like watching actors have to do these like yeah. <laughs> But I just remember laughing because I'm like, these people are all like pretending to be playing with kids, but there's no kids. And oh then that gosh. was like the one thing from that day that I remember being like, that was funny. That's amazing. But, no, I, I remember, yeah, that, that line, I remember being like, oh my God, this is insane. Like, wow. And I think I probably like did it. And then um, Floria was like, wait, can you do it so that like you put emphasis on this? And then I was like, okay, cool. And then, oh, let's do it like this. So it wasn't in any way like different than another thing that I had said. But yeah, I remember being like, holy, like this is crazy that wow. this is happening in Alma knows. But yeah, I guess it was kind of just, yeah, like like pretty much any other day. And sure. again, I feel so stupid when I'm talking to you because I'm like, all these things I didn't realize until I'd seen the show were that crazy. Yeah, and yeah, yeah. At the time, you're just going to work and you're just doing what right. you're supposed to be doing and you don't realize like how it's necessarily going to play out to the entire show. Sure. No, you're in that world and then like all of a sudden you see it translated as a show and as a medium and then you're like, wow, like this is the product, right? Like that's got to be a wild feeling. So it won Best Drama Series at the Emmys, and I saw pictures of you at the red carpet there. Was that a surreal experience, like, being at that? Yes. Okay, that was really cool. That was, um, yeah, that was probably where I was like, oh, my God, I can't believe I'm here and that I'm on this show. And, yeah, I guess that was probably a moment of, like, wow, I that this year was crazy. Like, that was where it kind of, like, clicked to me. Sure. But, um still still really fun though like I had so many of my friends a couple of my friends came down with me just to like be like my pump-up squad and like I don't know oh, makeup awesome. artist that, I, that I work with a lot in um in Vancouver came came down to do my makeup so it was just nice to have like I don't know it was more just like a huge celebration like that whole yeah. weekend we were just having so much fun so it was such a good way I I felt of like celebrating that because I just had people that I like love around me and I was with Maddie from the show and Maddie has become one of my really good friends. Oh, that's and, awesome. Like, it was great. It's such a good time. Yeah. When you guys were on set, was there a feeling ever with the whole show or like, did people start saying like, all right, like this show is going to be great. Like we're going to, we're going to be up for best drama. Like, does that ever conversation ever come up? Like, is there like a awareness to that? I think so. Like there are moments where it was like, this show is going to be the best show ever. Like, okay. 
I think it was a lot of the time, like crew who would be watching um, playback or they'd be watching the monitor and they'd just be like, Oh my God, that was amazing. Nice. And I'm like, really? And they're like, this show is going to be dope. And I'm like, Oh my God. So yeah, I think there was kind of like an excitement there. I, I don't know. Like I can't really speak for other people. I, I definitely was kind of like taking it as it came just because that was my like, that was kind of where I was at with the show. I, I wasn't like helping to produce it or like, sure. you know, I wasn't seeing all this footage from the day and, and like seeing what would happen. And I kind of like that whenever I'm acting and things to just not know. Cause then, then I, I don't think about it too much and I can just kind of focus on like performing, you know? Yeah, definitely. Um, so speaking of you performing, I want to switch over to, I saw on your Instagram, you promoted a Vimeo video you did called Semester Abroad. Anyone could watch on Vimeo. You star in it and you wrote in it too. Do you write a lot? And is this something you want to do more of? Yeah. Well, actually with that same crew of people, I just finished filming a web series um, that we're going to, that we're like, like, I don't know. I think we're going to release it in January. And like, I like writing. I more just like, from that, I don't know, like from what I was saying with improv and stuff, I, I just, I like things like that and I like comedy. So I actually just, um, it's just a couple of people that I've worked with in the industry in Van- or in Toronto that I like randomly like came across and we were like, oh my God, we should write. And we ended up just working so well together. And uh, I don't know, like I would love to write more in the future, like maybe even something more serious, but I think it was just so much fun and I love doing that, that like, that's why I did it. It, it yeah. was without any, like, I don't even know if we're going to, whatever, we're going to release it and we're going to be like, try and get it into web festivals. Nice. But at the same time, like, it's just been so amazing. Like we shot the last episode this weekend and we had a bunch of our friends come out to be extras and it was just the best feeling to, it's, it's an amazing feeling, right? To like oh, yeah. put words onto paper and then watch people like say them and come to life it was, yeah it's surreal yeah it, it was like amazing so like it's like that was one of like that project that I do with my friends is one of the coolest things I've ever done like I don't know I can't explain whenever we're shooting we're like oh my god is this real life like this yeah. is so cool that's amazing so yeah so that's kind of I don't know what I'll if I'll be writing more, but I I do like love it a lot, and I love even just producing and making those things happen. So hopefully I'll have more opportunities to do that in the future, and I would love to. So specifically with semester abroad, where did the inspiration for this video come from? It was just classic. Like we've all gone to like we've all done like our bachelor's degrees, and we were just, we always like make fun of things, and that as I was actually one of my friends, and we always joke about like people who are like oh my god like when I was on exchange and I too went on exchange to France and like was probably just as douchey about it (laughs) and we just thought that was funny and we were like so it kind of all of the things that we make fun of are like situations we have been in ourselves kind of like you know how everyone writes so we had been we had like met a couple people who were like that we were like oh my god shut up (laughs) and then so we just we drew the inspiration from that and then we kind of like wrote it together after we had like the original idea which is normally how we we wrote the entire web series as well just like we had the core idea because it had been something that had happened to us and then um and then we kind of like write from there you know when i was watching this video semester abroad i noticed your transition of accents was incredible and it was making me feel like i was almost hallucinating because i was like wait is she speaking different now? And like, it was so smooth. And I was wondering, do you speak a ton of languages or like, cause you in Canada, you've been in the U S you've been around. I feel like, does that kind of come through that? Like, yeah, I do. Well, I speak Serbian and I speak French, but um, I love doing accents and my whole dad's side of the family. So when we moved to Canada, when I was a kid, my whole dad's side of the family moved to Australia because everybody was leaving Serbia. And we were originally supposed to live in Australia, um, but we couldn't get a visa. And then Canada was just giving them out at the time. So we came to Canada. So that's the only reason that we moved to Canada. But because of that, I had a lot of family um, that lived in Australia. So when I was little, we actually went to Australia a lot to see them. So 
I just like, and I always love, loved Australia. Like I was always like, I'm going to live here when I'm older. And I just, I guess because we spent so much time there, the accent was like really easy for me to like yeah. pick up. But I, I love doing accents. Like I just love doing things like that. And I don't know. Yeah. You had a really, <laughs> like, really good Australian accent that maybe I was like, wait, was she from Australia? I had to like double check. I was like, whoa. Um, yeah. Now, in the video, you mentioned surfing, and I noticed you had a picture on your Instagram of something surfing related. I don't remember what it was exactly, but do you surf? Like, do you have an obsession of, like, surfing? Um, No, I just, but I, I have surfed kind of a lot, but not, like, enough to make me good. But I don't know. I've surfed a little bit. I'm not that good. Is this pos- Is it possible to surf in Canada at all? Is there, is there anywhere to go? Yeah, well, <laughs> where I grew up in Vancouver, um, there's a lot of surfing because it's, um, it's on the West Coast. And uh, we used to go to, there's this place called Vancouver Island. And there's this place called Tofino on Vancouver Island where you can surf. So that's where I've surfed a lot. And also visiting my family in Australia, I used to surf a lot there because I would be like bored with oh, like nice. only family. Nice. And then my aunt was like, do you want to take surfing? And I was like, yes, wow. anything to get me. Yeah. So then I surfed a lot actually. And then I went to like Costa Rica and I was like, Oh my God, like two years ago. And I was like surfing a lot and I thought it was cool. And nice. Multi-talented. I, yeah. I like it. Um, so before I let you go, Nina, I have to ask a question. Everyone's wondering, I think you kind of hinted at it, but will Alma be in season two of the handmaid's tale? Yes. Woo. I cannot wait. <laughs> that is great news. Yeah, I'm really scared. Are you guys still filming it? The second or? season is like everything you want to know that ha- literally even I was like, oh my God, everything that you want to know and that you're like hoping is going to happen after you've watched the first season happens in the second season and it's incredible. I cannot wait. And that is coming out in April on Hulu. Have you guys finished filming the season or is it still kind of in production? No, it's still in production. Yeah. Oh, wow. Yeah. Um, it's going to be filming for a bit of time, actually, like into the new year. Are you are you calling me from Gilead right now? Are we allowed to be talking? I'm, I'm... <laughs> <laughs> no, we're actually not allowed phones. I, I've actually been sent uh, by the aunt. No, um, no, I'm not. I'm, I'm, I'm just in my apartment. Okay. Um, but yeah, we are. I was actually shooting this week. So. Oh, wow. Yeah, we're still so... in full swing. Yeah. So definitely catch Nina in Handmaid's Tale Season 2 in April on Hulu, and then you mentioned your web series in January. Where will we be able to find that when it releases? We're going to release it um, on YouTube, and we're going to just, yeah, we're just going to release it on anything and anywhere. And I'll I'm sure you you'll know. be promoting it uh, on uh, your Instagram. I'll and, tweet about it, yeah. Tweet. Okay, cool. I'll, so do def- the, I'll do the tweet. Okay, so definitely follow uh, <laughs> Nina on Twitter and Instagram. Uh, check out her short story video, Semester Abroad on Vimeo. And uh, thank you so much for joining me, Nina. I'd love to have you on again after season two airs. That'd be awesome. Steve, and thank you. I, I was really enjoy talking to you. Yes, thank you so much. Everyone keep coming back for more celebrity interviews and please subscribe.